Hi and welcome back. In this tutorial we're going to start building our drum kit from the beatbox sample that we sliced in the previous tutorial and we're going to start work on our kick drum and we're going to basically take the beatbox kick that was in slice one this one here and we're going to just change a few settings on the simpler and add a saturator and a compressor and you might be quite surprised at how much of an effect this has and we're going to make this kick quite usable it's going to end up sounding a lot like a kick you might find at a drum machine that you might use in a house track techno track so the first thing i'm going to do that's clipped quite short because it's sliced to 16 so i'm just going to extend that region a bit so we've got a bit of natural decay and then i'm going to double click on a clip slot to create a new clip and I'm going to double click on the first beat of slice one to create a new note. <coughs> Just so we've got a note that'll keep playing to keep triggering the note so that we don't have to trigger it manually to, so while we're editing it. Just to keep it repeating. I'm going to reduce the length of that clip so that it doesn't take too long between triggering. But it's also not so quick that it's annoying. <coughs> okay, so now we've got that triggering. I might turn it up a bit first of all. Right, well one of the most important settings for a kick drum is the pitch envelope. And basically most of the kick drums that you would hear, in dance music especially, would have some kind of pitch envelope making the pitch start off high and very quickly drop down. One of the reasons for this is because when designing some of the older drum machines, the designers were attempting to emulate the sound of real drums. And with real drums, the sound of the beater hitting the skin actually tightens the skin a little bit, which raises the pitch a little bit. So the pitch rises very rapidly and then drops very rapidly. So this is the first thing we're going to do to our kick drum. We're going to use the pitch envelope in the simpler to create this kind of effect. So the pitch envelope is accessed by pressing the pitch tab here and then enabling it by pressing this button. And we have to turn the envelope setting up here and we're going to turn it all the way up to 48. And at first you can hear all that does is pitch the whole sample up by 48 semitones. And the reason for that is because the decay setting here is actually set to longer than the sample is playing for. So we're not hearing the pitch actually decaying yet. So we need to pull the decay back a bit. In fact, we're gonna pull that right the way down to somewhere around 120. And I'm gonna turn the sustain down a little bit so that it levels out a little bit lower. And you can hear just by doing that, that already makes it sound a little bit punchier and, and even that's a little bit more usable. I might just transpose it down a couple of semitones as well. And I mean, you know, that's a kick that you may even want to use in some sort of tracks, maybe some breakbeat or drum and bass tracks. But um, that's not what I'm after here. I want a bit more of a thuddy kind of club kick. So I'm going to turn on the filter and I'm going to go for the band pass 12. And I'm going to turn the frequency down to somewhere around 70 hertz. Now this really totally depends on what else is going on in the mix. In particular the bass. If you've got a bass that is already taking up some of these lower frequencies, then you're going to want to adjust the kick accordingly so they're not competing. So if you want a really deep, thudding, subby kick, then you might want it down lower around 60 hertz. But if you want it a bit higher and more punchy because the bass is already quite subby then you might want it up around 80 hertz or higher even so that's created quite a deep bassy thud there at the moment so you can hear that's made it very bassy but it's also made it sound quite dull we've taken out a lot of the top end frequencies which gives it its brightness. So what we're going to do now is add a compressor to level it out a bit. So we'll just find it here in the device browser. There we go. 
Now we can either drag it to the end of the chain there, or we can just drag it straight to the pad, and that'll insert it at the end of the chain automatically. So if we just pull the threshold down, and the, put the ratio up, and then the output up a bit, you can hear that's already leveled it out quite a lot. We can hear a lot more of the brightness coming back. What it's basically done is it's squashed the dynamics a bit so that the lower frequencies are no longer much louder than the higher frequencies. So it's leveled it out so that the balance is a bit more even between low and high frequencies in that sound. So I might add a saturator now, and I'll just stick it in between the two of them. Just Turn the output down first, it's always an idea with the saturator, and then the drive up a little bit. And that's bringing back even more of the brightness, bringing it out front a lot more. Now I'll pull the dry wet back a bit as well, just to so that the whole signal is not saturated completely. Now this kick is not sounding too bad, you could actually use this in quite a few different types of tracks. But at the moment I'm not entirely happy with it because of the way it decays. It's a bit too sharp, sort of sounds a bit gated. So the way to sort that out is to have a look at the volume envelope settings. We can access those by pressing the volume tab here. And you'll notice that all of the knobs have these little green squares here. And if you look down in the status bar here, it tells us this parameter is controlled by the macro control attack of the enclosing rack. That tells us that these are mapped to these macros over here. Now on one hand that could be useful because you could just select the rack and use auto mapping on your controller to control the envelopes using these macros. The problem with that is that every slice in this rack is also mapped to these macros. We don't want that because as we start changing all the other sounds we're going to want to give them their own independent settings. So we're going to need to unmap all of these macros. Now the reason this is, these are mapped like this is because the built-in preset when we sliced this sample is set to map all these by default. We can create our own presets using the defaults folder which will allow us to use a different preset when we're slicing that stops this from mapping automatically. But we're going to have a look at that in a later tutorial. So for now, let's just unmap these parameters. And we actually don't need to really do all of them, because I'm only really going to use the decay and the sustain here, but I'll just do them anyway. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn the sustain all the way down. And this is going to let us basically use the decay to control how quickly it fades out. And already, that's instantly made a, an effect. And I, I'm quite, I quite like that kick. So you can add a bit more decay if you want to, or you can even less. If you just want a really short, snappy kick, say if you've got a really boomy bass line, you might just want the kick to give that attack and that very fast punchiness, but you don't want any more out of it. But I'm going to leave it around here. And really that's pretty much it. I'm quite happy with that kick drum. You might want to change it as you start getting it into a mix and putting other sounds in there. You might find that it doesn't fit so well with some of the other sounds. But for now, that's a pretty good and convincing kick drum. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.